It's time to take a look at the papers this morning. Let's see what the headlines are across Nigerian newspapers. I have with me journalist Ifi Onyebule, as well as Dario Dufuokon here with me in the studio. Uh, gentlemen of the press, nice to see you both. Good to see there you is no too. lady, so... <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, really. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Let's begin with Daily Times newspaper now. Daily Times says, Senate faults federal government's amnesty for Boko Haram insurgents. Senate faults the federal government's amnesty for Boko Haram insurgents. Okay. Uh, right. Let's see how that goes. That's Daily Times. Now, from there, let's go to the Blueprint newspaper. Uh, Blueprint newspaper says, 1936 to 2020, how ex-governor, uh, ex-Kaduna governor Balara Bumusa died. It's really a sad uh, event of his passing when the news uh, filtered in. Now, my father, lover of the poor, the son is saying that, that he was voice for the voiceless. Buhari, Utom, Mark are all saying this. Musa tried expanding horizons for ordinary people. Erufa is saying this. A late elder statesman was uh, uncompromising. He's uncompromising. Forthright. Tinubu and Ipak is saying this. A defender of the masses is gone. The ACF is saying this. Balar Musa was... Uh, Second Republic Governor of Kaduna State, and his passing is really uh, a great loss to Nigeria and and even not just Kaduna State but to Nigeria and other statesmen. Moving on to the leadership newspaper. Uh, finally, federal government ratifies membership of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, and an OK 62.7 billion naira for Kano Road approves digital ID for IDPs. Okay, that's the leadership newspaper. From there, let's go to the News Direct. News Direct now says uh, Forex issues. That's the focus here. Downstream players reject CBN guidelines on 250 billion naira gas expansion fund. Say, agriculture agri platform not suitable for gas investment. And NNPC pledges to grow domestic gas utilization uh, to 4.5 uh, cubic feet. All right, that's. Uh, that's uh, News Direct. From there, let's go to Business Day. Business Day said COVID-19 test equipment cost reduce access to effective to uh, elective uh, surgeries. Okay, COVID-19 tests equipment cost reduce access to elective uh, surgeries. Okay, and the national economy is next now. Four months after signing the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, Nigeria ratifies membership. Okay. So people expect to see a different approach to all of that right now. Now, from there, let's go to Daily Trust. Daily Trust saying, Ndume IDPs, others, stop the radicalization of Boko Haram members. Okay, stop the radicalization of Boko Haram members. Arrest those funding terrorists. Senate committee is saying this. Heal our wounds first, born residents are saying, and they would not be released until the end of war. Army declares Shakao Al Banawi, 84 others wanted. Okay, the wanted list has been on since the past uh, four to five years, thereabout. I guess my guests will be uh, uh, ready to talk about this when we open discussion shortly. Now, from there, let's go to uh, The Guardian, The Guardian newspaper. 160,000 Nigerian children die of pneumonia yearly. Really a disturbing situation there, really disturbing. Right, that's the Guardian. From there, the Daily Sun is next now. Daily Sun says, after CBN's freezing of bank accounts, more trouble for NSAR's protesters. All right, and CAC delists firm linked to uh, mass action. PDP CSOs condemn federal government action. Undo governor urges those whose bank accounts were frozen to go to court. Why we can't comment now, the federal government is saying this, all right? So it's still a fallout from the, the NSAS protests. Now, moving ahead, the Nation newspaper is the last one we're looking at now. Rao over panel to dis dispose of recovered government assets. Senior lawyers, right activists are saying that the ACF, that's sorry, the AGF, that's the Attorney General of the Federation, lacks the power to set up the committee. 
That's what some senior lawyers are saying here from the headlines we have here on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Ra over panel to dispose of uh, recovered government assets. Okay, gentlemen, let's talk about the, the story on the front page of the Daily Trust that says uh, stop eradication, or sorry, stop deradicalization of Boko Haram members. And that's by Senator Alin Dume from Boronu State, who is one person who has, who understands the workings and what goes on in his state and the impact of all of uh, the terrorism on his people. Uh, Darren, let me start with you here. Um, it was a few, few, I think sometime, or a few days ago, let me put it that way. Now, we saw the headline from the UAE uh, where about six uh, persons who were alleged to have uh, sponsored Boko Haram one way or the other jailed. And Nigerians were actually, in fact, the governor of Borno State, uh, Professor Zulum, was saying kudos to the UAE and that we should even do the same thing here. Yeah, right. Uh, we should do the same thing back home. I mean, unfortunately, uh, what we've had and what we're still having is a situation, a worrisome situation where it appears, I use the word, that the government is treating criminals with kids' gloves. To imagine that this same government just declared the NSAS protesters as terrorists. Mm. And then the real terrorists, we don't need any dictionary or Google to seek explanation on why we should call Boko Haram terrorists. The world over. Mm. International organizations, foreign countries, uh, international governments here and there already classified Boko Haram and their likes mm. as terrorist organizations. Organization. But <clears throat> We, are, we always talk about either negotiating with them, discussing with them, and lately, we want to de-radicalize them. Mm. And what are we or doing? even give grant amnesty. No, you, you, need, you need to see the list of offers, because that's what I'll call it. You need to see the list of what we are offering them. And then the worst part of it to me is arrested Boko Haram fighters, either wounded or captured, in a war, because that's what it is. These people declared war on our country, their own country. They are no longer patriots. Then you can no longer call them citizens of Nigeria. But what are we doing? We intend, or we now plan, to bring out those arrested Boko Haram fighters, because that's what they are. They were arrested at war. Heal their wounds, treat them, clean them up in the name of the radicalization, then release them back into the society. In a country like ours, where there are no guides to what you do immediately, you leave the prison mm. or the courtroom, then most of them may likely return well fed, better equipped, normalized, and more healthy. Return to the war front to kill more of our soldiers. And if this is what we call the radicalization, the, we should look at the implication of this on our fighting forces. When a soldier sees that this man shot a gun at me somewhere in the forest of hmm. Maiduguri, and he sees him being given a babariga with cap to match, the government says we'll give you money to start a life. He be, and he is still in the forest fighting. He begins to compare that man's role and his own role. And he begins to think, isn't it not better to be unpatriotic? Who send the wrong signals so that, I can, so, so that I can be called to negotiate. Well, then also, to the people, the affected people of the areas where the, all this is happening, what have we done to alleviate their sufferings? Mm. What have we done to tell them that Nigeria loves you? This fighting is a face. It will pass. Mm. We will not leave you alone in this difficult time. We have not done enough for the people suffering. We want to take care of those killing them. All right. I, I don't understand that L process. Let me bring Ifi in here. Let me take it from where Dari has stopped. Mm. Till today, when we speak to some of the parents of Chibok girls, mm -hmm. they talk about government doesn't give us any updates. Government doesn't speak to us. No one is caring for us. We're still here just, you know, Caring, taking care of ourselves, within ourselves, Less using ourselves and all of that. Now, those who are said to have been de-radicalized, mm. you know, 
they go through all the treatment of government. In fact, they're like government Peking, like they, like they used to say in the local parlance. And then they are reintegrated, given everything. How, how, what kind of signal does that send to other citizens who are watching and even those but, who are but victims? But Daria has actually painted the picture no. um, for us. You look at people who you should have designated from day one as terrorists. And you're finding it difficult to call it exactly what it is. You just talked about the Chibok girls. I've been asking that question. These girls are already mamas now for crying out loud wherever it is that they are. But nobody's thinking about them. And I think it's such a big shame with what it is that's happening, um, Mike. Because you look at the pages of the newspaper. You're telling us about de-radicalizing them, rehabilitating them. Now, for those who went to villages and sacked the whole village, captured their men, killed them, took their wives, made them pregnant, they had children and all of that. What are you going to be saying to such people? Now these are the people you're saying, bring the arms that you have, we'll give you this, we'll even fly you out, we'll send you on training. I don't understand what's going on. And some legitimate citizens who are patriotic stood somewhere singing the national anthem with the flag. And what did you do? You dispersed them. However, even though the army has come out to say, yes, we were there, so, so, and so invited us, we were there, but we did not shoot at the protesters. But these are people who were genuinely and legitimately asking for what it is that they think they should have as citizens. I think it's such a big shame. And as I said to you, Adari, before we got on air, I'm just sick and tired of talking about Nigeria. That's the truth. Well, Nigeria, our dear country. I wonder how, how tired we can be. I am. Uh, because until, we keep until talking until Nigeria and is fixed. changing. Yeah, uh, until keep, I, we, we, well, we the point there is... The, the, the point there is... I, I, may, I may feel your frustration, but the point there is... But who is afraid we, of we, calling it what it we, is? We can uh, never well, be we tired. Here, we, are in this we, country. we can never be tired of our country yeah. because we are still the ones <laughs> to fix it. You're so, numb so, with so the things me, that so are going me, on. Let, let me find you small so that you <laughs> the, 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 the frustration will reduce. It will come down small. <laughs> it's, unfort it's unfortunate. Very but unfortunate. that's the reality. Yeah. Very unfortunate. But Dari, the, the point there is, someone like uh, Senator Ali Ntume, who has been in the Senate for a long time, he's a very respected senator, uh, he has been very straightforward and firm when it comes to his yes, stand against yes. uh, the, the move of government yes. and all of that. But how... How, um, uh, how do I put this now? But basically, how helpless exactly is the situation? He's calling no government shouldn't, but it doesn't seem like government seems to still want to go ahead. You see, you see the, 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 the maxim that says he who wears the shoe hmm. he knows where he pinches. Right pinches. Yeah, exactly. It's a reality. If somebody like Alin Dume is telling us anything, and I mean anything about Boko Haram and the insurgency in the Northeast. I think a serious government should be listening. You know why? He lives there. He represents yeah. that constituency. One of the worst eight constituencies. Mm. He was once declared a sponsor of Boko Haram. Yeah. He had to go to court, clear himself. He has been targets of attacks by Boko Haram members. Severally. Severally. So... We don't need anybody to tell us that there is an issue to it. There is something he knows. Somebody mm. wants him out of the way. <laughs> now, he, 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 the, the, the average Nigerian politician that I know, if it were to be Aline Dume, would now be hiding and would hardly say anything about Boko Haram or mm. the insurgents. There are others we know who are in his shoes, but they are as silent as anything. They're not talking. They're not talking because they understand the danger. But this man seems to be... Uh, I've interviewed him severally, mm. and he will tell you, if he dies today, it is the will of Allah. Yeah. That, look, if he keeps quiet, he can be killed. Mm. If he talks, he can be killed. So he would so, rather so put so the facts on the table. Mm. What I'm saying, in essence, is if he's saying, don't de-radicalize these people, leave them alone, so don't release them on the so end of the world. So that posterity will be kind to him, so that the history, mm. we, 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 well, you know... We, we, we judge him appropriately. Exactly, we say he spoke out about But is it. the government listening to him? The answer is That's no. a question. Who are those coming up with this idea of de-radicalization? And I want to put this on record, that uh, when uh, the amnesty program was to start in the South-South, some of us actually spoke against it. And I'll tell you that what is happening to us is the issue of precedence. Hmm. It is difficult for people to say, we will not 
offer amnesty to Boko Haram fighters. Because if they do, some people will remind them of the amnesty you offer at fighters in the South South. All right. Which, which ordinarily shouldn't be. We should look at issue based, based on, on merit, the merit of, its of, issue, the, of issues the issue. and the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, we have a country where everything is politics. Yeah. And it's not, it, All it's right. We, we hope we'll get past this because uh, we've gone through, Nigerians have gone through a lot of experience, mm -hmm. you know, that... Uh, uh, at the end you of know the that day, killing has actually should... become like when it happens. Three, three for like, five naira. Yeah. Like really. It, so how really, many people die? It's, it's really you know? a sad situation. It, it doesn't even make a covers anymore. Yeah, exactly. Have you noticed that anymore? Mm, exactly. I think we are all guilty. No, I, I, at, the, at the time, it was the issue of how many. How, how many? many? You put the numbers. Only. Well, they just say only. Yeah. Not, yeah, we remember a police officer who said, no, no, it was only it 10. Was, that I think we are, we are not, all normalizing uh, the absurd. Mm. It's really sad. All right, let, let's get into this interesting book here by uh, Ifi Onyebule here. And this will interest the public because when it comes to speaking on, on either in the public space or on the mass media and all that, there are so many things that a lot of people these days uh, don't do well. Take for granted. And uh, if for you to come to aggregate and articulate all of this in the book, mm -hmm. this is really interesting. How did we get here? It's a, it's a very <laughs> great question. How did we get here? Very good well, question. If you yeah. run us through some of these everyday mistakes that uh, you outlined in this book. Um, quite a number of mistakes. There are mm. about a hundred of them, but Whoa. I had to just chronicle up about 25 mm. uh, very important ones and he has to and do how it. to address them yes mm. and people who because these are real life experiences yeah. i shared some of my experiences mm. there because you find that people when they come into the profession as you know now everyone mm. thinks that journalism <laughs> is an all-commerce <laughs> affair as long as if I, my, my grandmother now can be <laughs> ha having a smartphone can <laughs> be a journalist yeah. Yeah. you know you just yeah. jump in people appear everywhere they say look i'm a journalist and mm. all of that and i say to them that you have a phone or that you can speak well you think you can speak well it doesn't make you yeah, a journalist a or a presenter as mm -hmm. it is. You need to train for it. Many don't understand. Even pepper sellers have associations. Oh, yeah. They have people that they go to. Even arm droppers, they have associations. They have, <laughs> they have people apprenticeship. that they go to. They go through you know, some level of apprenticeship. But people just jump on the business. Mm -hmm. They never ask questions. So what I've done there is to put these mistakes together. Mm -hmm. So that they get to understand that, yes, yeah, some people must have made the mistakes. Some of your seniors in the profession, yep. they may have made these mistakes, but you can actually jump over it yeah. if you know exactly what it is. If you look at some of the titles there, they truly uh, speak for themselves. Because people come out, they say, look, I'm famous because you appear on television yeah. or because they hear your voice on radio. That doesn't make you famous. Yeah. What are you saying? It's just like the person who works with the print media. What you write mm. tells a lot about you. And I'm not sure any editor will allow you to put rubbish in yeah, some of the newspapers yeah. that we've just read. Mm. But you find all of those things on social media because no one is, is regulating it. You just jump on it. It doesn't make you famous. You must understand what it is that you're writing. Mm. Then again, some people think they're indispensable. If I'm not there, nothing, nothing is going to happen. Anyway. And I say to them, it doesn't work like that. You can never be bigger than the organization yeah. that, that you, you work, work for. for. So whatever you do must be channeled towards the goals of that organization, the house style of that organization. Okay. So people need to understand all of that. All right, let me, let me bring Dari into this uh, as well, because he's also very familiar when it comes to... Now, the, the, we all as human beings can make mistakes yeah. Anytime, yeah. Mm. anytime. Yeah. No one knows it all. But sometimes there are some people who have this attitude of, you, you can't correct me. Who are yeah, you to yeah. correct me? <laughs> I, I, it's part of one thing that uh, she has outlined in this. How, how, does that, how does that stand as an obstacle in this, in this profession? Ah, a, a big obstacle. See, and I quickly want to thank uh, Ifi for coming up with mm. this. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. Uh, journalism, like she said, today, has become an open field yeah. where you can walk in. If you can't get a job, just jump in. <laughs> walk out when you like, and then you openly and confidently parade yourself as a professional when you are not. And you discover that there is little or nothing we can do about it for now. Mm. So if we can't stop them from doing our job, at least she has done something to help them stop spoiling the job. That's what I see here. At least with this. I'll beg whoever wants to practice as an emergency journalist to please get a copy of this book, <laughs> read it, so that you at least know those mistakes you are not supposed to make. Because you go on social media, somebody put up a lot of gibberish, and somebody said, can imagine this journalist. Mm. 
You read that every time. Yeah. This journalist can lie. And the man who committed that uh, atrocity mm. is actually not a journalist. Mm. But how many people are you going to explain to, to, or to scrutinize? To? So I want to say thank you very much <laughs> for coming up with this. And I beg all those uh, emergency, I don't want to say fake journalists again, <laughs> emergency journalists, so please get a copy of his Facebook. Mm. Read this it. Understand those things we will not want you mm. to do in yeah. our name because you're acting in our name. Mm -hmm. Please. So, having said that, too, I also want to say making mistakes in our profession is something we cannot do. Without. It's part of the but job. I think if we keep having things like this, yeah. it will help us develop on the Draw job. Draw attention and to. And the more we develop on the job, the yes. better for the profession. Okay. Now, if you, one other thing you outlined in this book is the issue of scripting before you go for a program, especially on the, when it comes to broadcasts. Okay. Yes. Going on TV, going on radio, some people feel, well, I've been doing this program for... I know it all. For, for years now. So I know what to say. I know my topics and I know my lines and all of that. Mm. So let's just roll. Put me on camera or put me on the mic and let me just roll. It doesn't work like that. Okay. There are two gentlemen that I would forever follow for as long as they're alive. One is a man called Jones Usen. Mm. The other one is a man called Femi Showolu. Mm. And these are men who have been Veterans. in the business for Veterans. over 40 years. Veterans. You know, I interviewed Femi shortly after he stepped out or stepped aside or stepped back from the profession and he said to me if he for over 40 years i never went on air for one day mm. without, without the a script. script and the i watched him he was my boss i watched him all through jones who said the same thing i call them ancestors yeah, in the business ancestors. They are they are, ancestors, they are ancestors. Yeah. i was on air with jones and i was always learning while on air with that man because he was a repertoire of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But you will never see Mr. Jones Hussein yeah, without a script. So what excuse do yeah. you have? I'm, I've done, thank God, just two decades in the business. Mm -hmm. I can't go on air without a script. I prepare. Yeah. No, I, I won't. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important. She's a pre ancestor. Pre -ancestor. Uh, pre -ancestor. She's, she's going there. Mike, it's uh. important. I'm sure you prepared this morning before coming on air. You just don't, you just don't badge in yeah. like that. Yeah. And it, it, some don't understand that the person you're interviewing as your guest is probably more intelligent than you are. It could be. It Remember Boyu, mm. the economist? Mm. You can't interview that man without knowing exactly what it is you're doing. Yes. Normally, I read for two days just to interview <laughs> the man because he's going to set the record straight with you. So Boyo. it's always important for you prepare. to actually prepare. Mm. It, doesn't, it doesn't cost you it, anything It is to really prepare. important for, for those who are listening from home, who are watching from home, especially those who are aspiring to go into journalism, especially in the broadcast and all of that, scripting is, is, is sacrosanct. You, you, it, is, it is foundational before you go for any program at all. You need a script and you have to uh, put up a script before you go uh, on, on air. Now, the title of this book, How Did We Get Here? Let me throw this question to <laughs> Dari. As, as we... All right, I understand we have to uh, yeah, leave you it. here now, yeah. but however, the discussion will continue uh, as on we get along we on how we got here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ifi, for putting this together. Thank you. Really Thank appreciate you for you. the opportunity to Thank talk you. about Thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dari, for coming on the program. Thank you.